I once had a conversation with a friend that even if you trace your sketch to the perfect T, it still looks ugly when you take off the sketch. And it wasn't until years later that I realized the problem. You're not supposed to trace. It's called line art. And to treat it as art, here are some basic techniques. Don't do this. This is why your line art is bad. Art si cha. In this mission, I'll show you good line art setup, classic line technique, customization, and even explain why your line art looks so bad when you turn off the sketch. This is how you make the perfect line art. So let's start this mission. Before we begin, keep in mind a higher resolution canvas can make a difference in the pixelization of your lines. I will be working in a 300 dpi canvas which is often enough for professional projects. Just try to go above at least 75 dpi. Sketch stage. In the sketch stage, you want to make sure that your details are as fleshed out as possible. Having a sketch with grey or non-clear areas will make you have to reline a lot in the line art stage as I had to do with this braid. So pull up your reference and deal with those details if you don't want your sketch stage to come back in the lining stage. Trust me, it's really annoying. Also, try to make your sketch extra dynamic but accurate so that your extra liveliness can also spill into your line art. So a summary for sketches would be to get all of your gesture in and get all of your guesswork out. Secret number one. This is how you make your line art actually look like your sketch lower the opacity of your sketch. I mean low opacity, like 3 to 15%, as in you can barely see that thing. Then when you have to zoom in and have no idea what the lines look like from afar, just compensate by using a reference window to be able to view the whole artwork. And don't just lower the opacity of your drawing, also try changing it to a different color to make it easier to see your line art. Why? Because with the low opacity, you already know what your line art actually looks like. You aren't just tracing, and you aren't looking at your line art and your sketch simultaneously. This is literally what saved my line arts from looking like this to this. Lastly, don't forget to lock this layer so you don't end up drawing on it, you clown. Okay, dear artlings, you have to keep in mind that the goal is smooth, long strokes. You want your hand gliding across the canvas, and here is the optimal setup to get that. If you find that your sweaty hand is having some trouble moving across the screen, lessen friction with an artist glove and turn on palm rejection on your tablet. If you don't have an artist glove, don't worry, just use anything that covers your side palm to your pinky. Choose a brush with streamline and is sensitive to weight pressure. Streamline basically course corrects and smoothens your brush strokes so they don't wiggle. Just keep in mind these settings can stabilize or course correct too much making it difficult to create accurate nice curves. You can toggle the setting to how you wish or switch back and forth to your sketch brush for lining things with a lot of curves such as hair, hatching, or circles. Weight pressure allows for you to press down easily on your brushes to add thickness to your stroke. By adding more pressure to your downstrokes or where there would be shadow, you can easily add a little spice and the classic tapering look to your line art and line weight. This often gives the line art a finished and aesthetic look. Just think of calligraphy and brush pens, which is basically weight sensitivity on steroids. There is also a pressure curve setting that you can toggle in Procreate. You can try using this graph, which is good especially if you struggle with light pressure. Thickening lines helps you to imply a lot of things. It helps you to imply shading. It helps you to also imply perspective. That's why I made the hand lines generally thicker than the rest of the painting since it is closer to the viewer. Next, have your non-drawing hand in position to quickly undo mistakes, zoom in, and rotate the canvas for the best angles. Secret number two. Have enough room for your drawing arm in position to pivot from at least the elbow. Do not use your wrist as much as possible, unless for small movements like hatching. You need to pivot from your elbow for at least three reasons. One, it makes your strokes longer and more efficient. This also makes you avoid chicken scratch, because you won't be picking up your hand every time you went to make the next stroke. Two, the heavier weight of your arm also makes it much more stable. And three, lastly, but most importantly, it will be better for you in the long run. Your arms are much stronger than your delicate wrists. That is why when you're working in even bigger canvases, you'll always hear people saying to draw from your shoulder. 
take note, this makes the best type of circles. Now that you have all the players in position, all you gotta do is zoom in and I'll do do the line. The classic way. In one long, smooth motion, draw the line pivoting from your arm. Keep in mind that a faster speed means that the stroke will be more smooth, but a slower speed means more accuracy. So a medium speed with a streamline setting should be enough to get you the best of both worlds. Zooming in and making the target line utilize the whole space of the screen also does wonders for smooth and long lines. Then rinse, repeat, line and control Z until you make it. While in this stage, consider adding line weight simultaneously by pressing down on the downstrokes, in the middle of curves, and where there are shadows. If you don't have streamline settings or stabilization settings for your brushes, consider a technique called overshooting. This is where your brushes are deliberately fast and go beyond the target sketch lines. Then you can just erase the overshoot and find yourself with a clean, sharp, and tapered look. Bonus! You can customize. Y'all, there are literally so many ways to customize your line art. A lot of them also go directly against what I just taught you about smooth long lines. There's broken lines, there's wiggly lines, there's thick lines with no line weight at all. My favorite line weight customization is when there would be ambient occlusion and hatching. It's just very simple, it looks really good, and these are some of the ways that you can do them. I also like coloring my line art so that when I render it, it has a more natural look. Lastly, clean that up. Pro tip. You can use liquify tools to easily nudge your line art as well as this edge tool to make sure that your lines are sharper and thinner without you having to redraw it. Even if you follow everything in this guide, you may find that there are places that still look bad. Don't fret. Just duplicate the line art, color the spots that need cleaning, lower opacity, and reline until you're satisfied. Merge the layers together and ta-da! You have gorgeous line art. Good job! Anyways, I hope this helped your artlings out. This workflow has a lot of best practices. So as you can see, line art is just about good setup, technique, and practice. If you enjoyed, please check out the other art ventures that you can join. And much love and bubble tea to you.